So it's been about five weeks since my last video, and I've been thinking. I think it's time to start revisiting some of my old projects. Now starting this week, I'm going to be revisiting my compressed air engine. Uh, many of you, if you're subscribed to me, you probably would have seen this uh, compressed air engine, or at least what's left of it. I don't know where I've put the top half of this, uh, and the piston's gone missing. But yeah, if you haven't seen the video on this, then I'll link it down below. Uh, but if you have, then let's get started on the version 2. So there's quite a few things that I want to improve with the version 1 engine, but the single most annoying thing with this engine is the piston. Or more specifically, the piston spring. I just hate this spring. It has to be a really specific spring, spe specific diameter, specific length, uh, specific tension, and it tends to snap or bend and cause the engine to stop working. So let me show you how I'm going to get rid of this spring. Imagine this is the engine, or this is the cylinder, this is, these are the exhaust holes, and this is sort of the cylinder head valve section. Here we have the piston. As you can see, it sort of looks similar to the uh, version 1 piston in that it has this small little pole out the top. Here we have the BB pellet, or the ball valve, and there'll be an O-ring sat here, and, well, that's slightly too big. There we go. So that makes a nice seal at the top. There will be a compressed air feed in the top here, and the ball valve will prevent the air from leaking out. Now, the plan with this engine is that the piston will obviously be connected to the crankshaft at the bottom. And the most important thing about this is having a strong flywheel uh, momentum. So the flywheel will obviously, when I spin the propeller, which is essentially the flywheel, will push the piston up and it will come in contact with the ball valve when it's almost at the top of the stroke, when, it's, when the con rod is about here. Now, what's important about this engine is the center line between the main axle of the, of the crankshaft and the piston, basically when the connecting rod is completely vertical. So the ball valve will come in contact with the piston when it's almost in line with the center line, so that by the time it's in line with the center line, the ball valve is just slightly open. Now, as you can see, there's a big section uh, of volume at the top here where uh, the piston isn't really making much use of. In a regular engine, you want the piston to almost come in contact, not quite come in contact, but very close to the top of the cylinder head. And the reason for this is that hopefully the gap between the ball and the O-ring will just let enough air in uh, slow enough to fill up this volume and the time it takes to fill up this volume is long enough so that the connecting rod can pass through this center line. Now if it doesn't pass through the center line the force from the compressed air will push it back round the other way which is what we don't want which is a it will basically backfire the engine. So hopefully by the time this connecting rod gets to here this pressure will be great enough uh, so that it will push the piston back down and because it's on this side it will continue to rotate round this way. Now the ball valve will shut as soon as the pole loses contact with it and the piston will go down, rotate the crankshaft round, uh, the air that was in this section will expand and it will leak out the bottom here. So as the air leaks out the bottom here we now have low pressure in here and the uh, propeller will then act as a flywheel and push the piston back up, therefore redoing the cycle. That's the theory. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's get printing. Did I mention I'm going to be printing this engine out of PLA due to its ease of print and hardness or resistance to abrasion, which will hopefully cause the piston to wear down less. I just hope the PLA will be able to seal properly and not let the air leak out. And because you can't really acetone smooth PLA plastic, I had to resort to sanding the piston and cylinder with 1,200 grit sandpaper, and it seems to work pretty well. So here is the version 2 of the compressed air engine. Up front we have the large propeller which acts as the flywheel, 
uh, which will make the piston go back up once it's been pushed down. Uh, and there's a 3D printed crankshaft, which goes all the way through here. However, the bolt which clamps the propeller down also goes all the way through the crankshaft. So it's a bolt reinforced 3D printed crankshaft. Now, if I turn it over, you can see the uh, crankshaft in there with the connecting rod, the con rod, which goes up to the piston. And the piston goes up and down inside the cylinder. These are the two exhaust holes where the air will escape from. And then just above it is the main valve housing, which is this section uh, from my diagram from earlier. Now, with this valve section, it bolts to the cylinder using three bolts just like on the uh, version one compressed air engine. However, there are four new bolts, which bolt it to a 3D printed bottle cap. Now this bottle cap is really thick because I want it to hold a lot of pressure. And there's an O-ring in there to make it seal to the lid, to, sorry, to the end of the bottle. So once it's threaded onto the bottle, it's really solid and that is not going anywhere. And that's what it looks like when it's complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressurize this bottle through the valve and we'll see if this version two works. So my bench looks a bit more messy now that I've zoomed the camera out a bit. But anyway, I've mounted the engine onto a bottle. This is actually the bottle I used for my uh, air powered uh, propeller video. It's got the valve at the back here. And I'm using a single bottle rather than a double bottle that I used in my compressed air plane uh, because I reckon this can hold a lot more pressure than when I've glued two bottles together. So I'm going for a smaller bottle, higher pressure rather than bigger bottle, lower pressure. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna have to pump this uh, up out of shot because the, the hose on my pump is slightly too short, but I'll pump it up down here and then we'll give it a test. Let's do this first test at 40 psi in three, two, one. Okay, so it doesn't quite work and I think I might know why. Uh, I designed the uh, top of the piston. Let me grab this drawing. The top of the piston I designed to be extra long uh, to start with. And the reason for this is that I can always trim it down. So I reckon what's happening is it's too long, holds the ball valve open too much, and that causes it to backfire, like I explained uh, at the beginning of the video. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna open up the, I'm gonna take the head off, and then just sand down the top of that piston, and hopefully it causes the ball valve to not open as far and maybe run. So I've sanded down the piston a bit, so now it doesn't open the uh, valve as far or as early on in the actual cycle. And uh, I'm gonna pump it up and give it another test. Okay, that's, that's 50 PSI. Ready, and... It almost seems like the valve isn't opening far enough now. So at first the piston was opening the valve too early and it was causing it to backfire. And now it's not quite opening it enough to keep the engine running. So I've been doing a bit of thinking about this engine and I reckon it's not worth spending any more time on this design of piston valve system. Uh, without the spring, uh, it either opens the valve too early, which causes the propeller to backfire or it opens it too little and there's not enough airflow uh, into the cylinder causing you know not enough power for the piston to go down. This obviously means that this engine won't be working in this week's video which obviously is a bit of a pain for you guys to watch however there are some really good design aspects that I like from this version 2 engine aside from the springless piston. Uh, for one I completely redesigned the whole crankshaft section here and the crankcase uh, to run a larger bearing. There's less play in this bearing, uh, very, very little play actually. And the crankshaft is 3D printed with notches to link each piece uh, so that the crankshaft doesn't slip. On the version one, it would slip and under high pressures, if the propeller slips, 
it loses its flywheel effect and is unable to open the ball valve at the top. So the engine would never run above about 60 psi, uh, which was a bit of an issue if I wanted to try and get it to run you know, as powerful as possible and for as long as possible. The other design change that I really like is this whole top section here. Uh, aside from obviously the internals, which the ball valve didn't work, but I can redesign the internals. Uh, the fact that this engine now bolts directly to a 3D printed uh, bottle cap is really nice and it's a really rigid solution. Uh, on the version 1.2, I guess you could call it, in my compressed air plane video, uh, if you rewatch that video, you'll see I had a hose between a bottle lid and the engine. And it was a nightmare to seal and anything above 50 psi and it would just leak like crazy. If you rewatch the video, you'll hear um, as I'm pumping, you can just hear it hissing as I'm rushing to launch it. So the fact that this seals really nicely is, is a good plus. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize these new design changes with the top section and also the crankshaft. And next week's video, I will revert back to the version one piston with the spring and see how well that works. Hopefully I can get it to run at a higher pressure uh, because I want to run it with a smaller bottle um, at a higher pressure uh, just to see if that works any better. Um, you know, instead of running a really large bottle at 50 psi, run you know a smaller bottle at 100 psi. So yeah, I think that wraps up this video. It's kind of a pain not getting it working, but um, I seem to have run out of time. In my compressed air engine original video, I didn't really show how long it took me to design and build that engine. Uh, so I've managed to design this version two in about four days and obviously I've run out of time. So anyway, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're new to my channel. If you enjoyed this little experiment and uh, seeing how I tried to modify it and failed, uh, I think I learned a few good lessons from it though. PLA can handle quite a bit of strength and also I like the redesign of these new parts. Then uh, please leave a thumbs up and a huge, huge thanks to all my patrons. You guys make these weekly videos or for the past five weeks, not so weekly videos. Uh, thank you very much for supporting me. And if you wish to support my videos, uh, the upcoming weekly videos, then please support me on Patreon. I'll post a little thing right here. So join me next week for the version 2.2, 2.1, the next version of this engine. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, and I'll see you next week.